much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where we are always striving to find the most obscure answers. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> Couple number one. Hello, my name is Myra. This is my son, Ruri, and we're from Glasgow. <laughs> Couple number two. Hi, Alexander. I'm Dean. This is my wife, Lisa, and we're from Warwickshire. Yes! <laughs> Couple number three. Uh, hello, I'm Michael, and this is my housemate, Jonathan, and we're both from Southampton. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, couple number four. Hello, my name is Graham, and this is my daughter, Georgina, and we're from Ashington in Northumberland. And these, ladies and gentlemen, are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you all very much. We'll be finding out more about you throughout the show as it goes along. So that leaves just one more person for me to introduce. He's a man who is so bright he can explain it's all been a terrible misunderstanding to the police in a dozen languages. It's my pointless friend. It's Richard. Hi, uh, <laughs> hi everybody. Hi, uh... Good afternoon to you. Uh, and to you. Myra is troubled already. I know, I know. We don't normally get applause after people's introductions, do we? I know. And now the audience felt they had to even... You have to, you have to applaud Warwickshire. <laughs> really, I don't believe that came from the heart, do you? The Warwickshire applause. I mean, Warwickshire's lovely. I just don't think there's a lot of Warwickshire people in. We've got two returning pairs. Uh, Graham and Georgina did very well last time, but we saw a fantastic jackpot round last time. And our jackpot finally went, didn't it? To... It fi yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. Sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah. About sorry about that. Sorry, Myra. No, stay, stay. <laughs> well, all to play for today. Now, all our questions on Pointless have been put to 100 people before the show, and our contestants here need to find the obscure answers our 100 people didn't get. Now, everyone's wanting to find a pointless answer, of course. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave, and each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. As you will have gathered, Darren and Kieran won the jackpot last time, so today's jackpot starts off at £1,000. Right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. OK, in this round, I'll take an answer from each of you, but there's to be no conferring. Whichever pair has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated, so try and make sure that's not you. OK, our first category today is... Sport. It's sport. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> and the question concerns... Sporting terms. Sporting terms, Richard. On each pass, we're going to give you some pairs of sporting terms. We just need you to tell us with which sport are they most closely associated, please. It's going to be seven pairs on each pass. There's going to be 14 sports to guess at home. Good luck. Thanks very much. OK, so we are looking for the sports with which these pairs of terms are most closely associated. And here is our first board. We've got chain gang, nickel defence, hairpin net shot, tumble drop shot, home plate infield fly, hike out spinnaker, Points in the paint, pump fake, clean and jerk, snatch, and clinch and Queensbury rules. I'll read those all one last time. Chain gang, nickel defence, hairpin net shot, tumble drop shot, home plate, infield fly, hike out, spinnaker, points in the paint, pump fake, clean and jerk, snatch, and clinch Queensbury rules. There we are, seven pairs of sporting terms. Now, Myra and Ruri. You all drew lots before the show, and today you are going to go first. Uh, what do you do, Myra? Uh, I'm a consultant in child and adolescent psychiatry. I retired a year ago, but I've been doing locums, part-time locums for people who are on sick leave. Or Is it quite fun doing locums? Because it's all... Oh, having worked full-time all yeah. my life, just doing two days a week is <sighs> wonderful. Yeah, have you taken up anything in your, in your retirement, though? Um, well, I, I want to get back to piano lessons. I did piano when I was a kid, but I sort of dropped it. And going back to singing, singing in choirs. OK, so, Myra, there are seven pairs of sporting terms. Can you identify a nice, obscure sport? I'm just going to go for a clean and jerk weightlifting. Weightlifting, says Myra, for clean and jerk. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said it, if it is. It is right. 40. <laughs> not bad. Not bad at all. Myra, not happy with that, but that's not a bad score for clean and jerk. Yeah, the clean and jerk is when you, uh, you get the bar above your head in two movements and the snatch is when you do it in one. 
That's what a snatch is. That's what a clean and jerk is. <laughs> now then, Lisa. Hi. Lisa. Listen, sport. Do you recognise any of these pairs of terms? I have tried to sort of work out a few, and I think I might know one. I'm going to go for home plate and infield fly. I think it could be baseball. Baseball. It's that plate bit, isn't it? The home plate, yeah. surely. Baseball, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said baseball. Absolutely right, Lisa. Very well done. 40, our best score so far. 50 is what you scored. A lot better than 100. That's some good damage limitation there, yeah. The home plate is where the batsman stands and also where he's got to get back to. And infield fly is in case you need a wee in the middle of a game. <laughs> <laughs> now then, Jonathan. Hi there. Jonathan, good afternoon to you. Where are you from, Jonathan? Um, I go to Uni at Southampton, but originally I'm from Worcester. And what are you studying? Uh, economics and philosophy in my final year. In your final year? Oh, wow, so not much of it left. No, dissertation what, coming in. What a brilliant thing to do, come and do pointless. Yeah, helping with the studies. Yeah, definitely. well, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Well, now, uh, do, do you get up to much sport? I do a fair bit, yeah. I uh, row for the uni, used to play rugby. Do, do you ever come across these kind of terms in any of your sports? Not any sports that I play, no. but I think I know a few. Yeah. Yeah, I think that chain gang and nickel defence is American football. American football, chain gang and nickel defence, or nickel defence, as you quite go rightly American put it, it there. <laughs> uh, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said American football. It is indeed American football. As I say, 40 is our best score so far. You smashed through that. Look at that. Oh, wow, very well done indeed, Jonathan. 11. Good stuff. Nice start, Jonathan, the chain ganger. They're, they're the people who help uh, with the yardages, marking out the yardages, and the nickel defence is a type of defence. Of course, needs no explanation. Uh, Graham, welcome back to the show. Great to have you here. Thank you. Remind us what you do, Graham. I work for a well-known high street bank. Very good indeed. A sportsman as well? Yes, I think you uh, are, right? You're I, quite... Yeah, I like to go to the gym, and, but I watch a lot of sport. Very good. OK, well, there's not a great deal left on the board, but if you could take us through it all, that would be amazing. Hairpin net shot, perhaps. Basketball. Hike out, spinnaker. Spinnaker's a sail, so I would say yachting, sailing. Points in the paint, pump fake. Well, I thought pump fake, these two do in American football, so it can't be that, so I'll try Aussie rules for that. And clinch Queensbury rules, Marcus of Queensbury did boxing rules. But I'll go for hike out, spinnaker. Yachting. OK, yachting, sailing, you said, yeah. OK, hike out, spinnaker, yachting or sailing. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many 100 people said that. Absolutely right. <laughs> 23. <laughs> Not bad at all. Second lowest score of the pass. Richard. Well played, ground straight back into it. And, yeah, as you say, spinnaker is a sail. And to hike out, that's when they lean over the side of the boat. Uh, let's take a look at the rest now. Clinch and Queensbury rules, you're quite right, was boxing. Uh, but it would have been a bigger score, would have scored you 41. Now, the hairpin net shot and the tumble drop shot. Not basketball. I say netball. Not netball oh. either. It's actually badminton. Ah. Oh. So four points oh. if you'd said that. And points in the paint and pump fake are both from basketball. And that would have scored you seven points. So the best answer up there is badminton. Well done if you said that. Very good. Thanks, Richard. Well, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at the scores as they stand. 11, Jonathan. Oh, very good score there. Look at that. Looking pretty strong. Uh, then up to 23, where we find Graham and Georgina. Up to 40, where we find Myra and Ruri. And 50, Lisa and Dean. Not too far out ahead. Uh, so not too much pressure on you, Dean, but you are still the high scorers. Best of luck on the next pass. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put seven more pairs of sporting terms on the board, and here they are. We have got carom ball, gardening, peloton dropping wheels, stroke judge pull boy, rip entry tuck, ankle tap scrummaging, cock feather fletching jig, pot push stroke. I'll read those all one last this time. This is like the rudest round we've ever done. It is so <laughs> rude. Carom ball, gardening, peloton dropping wheels, Stroke judge, pull boy, rip entry, tuck. What, what is this? Ankle tap, scrummaging, <laughs> cock for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did so well.
Cock feather. <laughs> Fletching jig. I have said that right. Pot push stroke. That's very good. There we go. Now, so, I'll tell you what, if you, could, if you recorded that as a ringtone, you'd be a millionaire. <laughs> I just have. So, remember, we are looking for the sports with which these pairs of terms are most closely associated. Now, Georgina, you have to find the one you think the fewest of our 100 people knew. Now then, Georgina, remind us what you do. I'm a textile student. At Newcastle? At Newcastle College, yes. Very good indeed. And in your spare time, you like knitting? I do, yes. <laughs> have you made anything you're wearing today? I haven't, no. Jumpers are a bit out of my league. It's, yeah, it's really hard, scarf. jumper. Sort of what, sort of thing, what sort of things have you, have you made so far? Scarves and snoods. Uh, now then, you're on 23, the high scorers are on 50, Dean and Lisa there. So, yeah, if you can score 26 or less, mm. you'll avoid becoming the high scorers. Purely for tuck, I'm going to have to say trampolining. For rip entry, tuck. A rip. Big guess. OK, trampolining, says Georgina. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said trampolining. Oh, no. Not a surprise. <laughs> well, we'll discover why in a moment or two, uh, but unfortunately that's an incorrect answer. I'm afraid that scores you the maximum of 100 points, takes your total up to 123. Sorry, Georgina. Sorry, Georgina, not a bad guess. There is a tuck jump in, uh, in trampolining, but no rip entry, I'm afraid. <clears throat> now then, Mike, I have good news for you. You are through to the next round. You will have to give an answer, obviously, but even if you score 100 points, you won't overtake Georgina and Graham on 123. This is good news. Now you know that, what do you make of this board? I'm going to go with um, peloton and dropping wheel for cycling. Cycling. Uh, now, Mike, what do you do? Uh, I'm a student like uh, Jonathan. Uh, and what are you studying? Uh, mechanical design, but at a different university as Jonathan. All right, but you share, you share a flat? We uh, have a, the same house, yes. Same house, yeah, very good. Good stuff. OK, so, cycling, you're saying, for peloton and dropping wheels. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many of our people said it. No red line for you, because you're already through. It is right. Oh, that's a good answer. 28, very well done, Mike. Lovely low total of 39. Uh, obviously, Peloton is the big clue there. That's the, the, the big main group of riders. Uh, now then, Dean. Dean, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Um, remind us what you do, Dean. I work for uh, the world's leading 4x4 yeah. car manufacturer. And how is that free car deal coming along? <laughs> along? Because we, uh... I, I rang my boss last night and he said, we'll see what we can do. OK, very good. There could be a couple of trophies in it for you, is what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, um, very good. Uh, so, Dean, yes, you're on 50. The high scorers are Georgina and Graham on 123. Well, let, let's go for it. Cock feather, fletching jig, archery. OK, um, archery, says Dean. Here comes your red line. If you get below that, you are through to the next round. Let's see if that's right. How many people said archery? It is right. Very well done. Very well done indeed. Look at that. 15, 65, your total. Very good answer, Dean. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, Ruri, I have to ask you this. What was it like growing up in a house with, uh, with a consultant adolescent psychologist? Oh, you wouldn't believe just anything I do. It's oh, she, she must be able to read you like a book. Well. Or so she thinks. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> very clever. Oh. Uh, now then, Rory, what do you do? Uh, I'm a math student at Glasgow Uni. Very good indeed. What year are you in? Just first year. Oh, just started. Yeah. Good it's stuff. All easy. All going well? Yeah. Enjoying it? Yeah, enjoying the student life. Good stuff. Uh, now then, Rory, what do you make of this board? It is all yours. You can talk um, us through it if you like. Well, I have no idea of the top one. I'd say stroke judge and pool boy. Because boy's got a U in it, Something on the water and stroke dodge might be rowing. Rip entry, tuck, I think maybe diving. Ankle tap, scrummaging, I think it's rugby. And pot and push stroke, I think, is snooker. But I think I will go for rip entry, tuck, diving. Diving, says Rory, for rip entry, tuck. Let's see if that's right. Uh, here is your red line. You're on 40. The high score is on 123. Are Georgina and Graham still? Get below that red line, you are through to the next round. Let's see. Diving, is it right? How many people said it? It is right. Very well done, Rory, and you're through. 
28 takes your total up to 68. If the rip entry is going to the water with as little splash as possible, then the tuck is much the same as it is in trampolining. That's, you know, pulling the knees up to the chest. Let's take a look at the rest. Uh, Caram ball and gardening, do you know that? No. It's cricket. Seven points. Stroke judge and pool boy. I think rowing is a very good guess. It is on the water. It's swimming. Ankle tap and scrummaging at Rugby Union. Would have scored 61. And Ruri, you're right about pot and push stroke. That is snooker. Would have scored a 44. Very well done to win on. I've got all 14 of those. It's very impressive. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, so, at the end of our first round, the losing pair heading home with our high score of 123. I'm sorry to say, it's Graham and Georgina. Mm. Oh, I had high hopes. Or is it, or is it just because the, 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 the jackpot's gone down? You've, you've oh, lost yeah. interest. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We've got the first train home. We're not hanging around here. <laughs> uh, oh, head to head last time. Yeah. yeah. But um, it's been lovely having you on the show. Thank you so much for playing. Georgina and Graham, great contestants. Thank you. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. And so now we're down to three pairs, and at the end of this round, we go down to two pairs. We've seen off one of our returning pairs, there's just Dean and Lisa remaining from the last show. Mike and Jonathan looking very strong, lovely low scores in that round. And, uh, and Myra and Ruri, not bad at all. Uh, best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two is World Geography. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many countries with the most forest coverage as they could. Wow, Richard. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. OK. Yeah, we are looking for the, uh, the top 30 countries in the world with the most forest coverage, please. This is from... Uh... 2005, the World Resource Institute counted every hectare of forest in the world. Also known as Forest Whitaker's Almanac. Oh. <laughs> if you like. <laughs> uh, and we are looking for the top 30 countries on that list. So please, so the countries with the most hectares of forest, and so not the most percentage, but just the most hectares overall in the world. And as always, by country, we mean a sovereign state that is a member of the UN in its own right. Yeah, I was wondering about that. <laughs> and as always, by forest, we mean, you know, like trees and such. <laughs> Ruri, oh, how good are you on wooded countries? Oh, it's, it's not my strongest subject. OK. Um, I think I'll go for Canada. Oh, that's good. OK, let's see if Canada's right, and if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said Canada. It's right. 47. I don't know if that's a good score or a bad score at this stage, but it's, it's better than 100. <laughs> anyway, uh, very well done. 47 for Canada. It's got the third most forest of any country in the world, over 310 million hectares. At least it did in 2005. They've had some terrible trouble with mountain pine beetles. The Canada. beetles? Mm. Mountain pine beetles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Destroying huge tracts of forest. Wow. Yeah. Uh, thanks very much indeed. Uh, Lisa. Yes. Lisa. OK, forested countries. I'm just thinking, is it a forest with a Christmas tree? Or is it a forest that... Listen, these are all forests, yeah. I'm sure. A rainforest, that's what I'm thinking. So I'm going to go it's, with... it's good to think out loud, Lisa, yeah, if you sorry, like. Yeah, sorry, I'm going to... If that helps. I'm going to go with Brazil. Brazil. Let's find out. Brazil, is that right? It's right. <laughs> Very well done. 62. <laughs> Brazil. Brazil's got the second most, 477 million hectares of forest. OK, thank you very much indeed. So we are looking for countries with the most forest coverage. Mike, wh what would you like to go for? Um, I, I'm quite confident that John's got this category nailed and it's certainly not a, a strong <laughs> category for me. So I'm going to go with um, Peru as my answer. Peru? Peru, yeah. Uh, let's find out. Peru, is it right? And if it is, how many people said it? It's absolutely right. Very well done, Mike. Doesn't matter if Jonathan's got this category nailed. Looks like you have too. 17, best score so far. Very well done. <laughs> Peru. It's in the top 10, actually, Peru. 68 million hectares of forest. Who knew? Who knew? I'll tell you who knew, the World Resources Institute. 
That yeah. was someone's job for like quite a long time. It's quite a fun job. Actually, you can probably do it from satellite. You can just what take about an afternoon. No. Or no. A, a no. day. You've got to do it on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do it on a bike. Wow. Someone's job to go around Bahrain counting trees. Oh, that's quite fun. Just with packed lunches, watching out for bears. <laughs> yeah, but around the whole world. All right, watch out for a lot of bears and maybe some crocodiles. I mean, even in Peru, you've got to count 68 million hectares. Keep you fit. <laughs> Thanks very much indeed, Richard. Well, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at the scores as they stand. 17, Mike. Lovely score there. Very much the best of that pass. So, yeah, Mike and Jonathan looking pretty strong on the back of that. 47s, where we find Ruri and Myra. And then up to 62, where we find Lisa and Dean. Uh, OK, we're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? OK, so we are looking for countries with the most forest coverage. Jonathan, Mike seemed to think you would have this nailed. Was he right? I would disagree, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, uh, it's quite an obscure knowledge that Mike thinks well, I have. He's left you um, in a pretty good state there, actually. I, uh, 62 is the high score. You're on 17, so 44 or less sees you into the head-to-head. -head. I'm going to go with Germany. 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 OK, here's your red line. Get below that, you're in the head-to-head. Let's see if Germany's right. How many people said it, if it is? Oh! Oh, I was thinking of all those forests. Black forest, Thurungian forest or something like that. And, uh, and it's not in the top 30. What about that? I'm afraid that scores you the maximum of 100 points. I'm really sorry, Jonathan. Richard? Yeah, you might think it was in there, wouldn't you? Especially with the, the Gatto and all that. It's not in, uh, not in the top 30, not even in the top 46. Oh. They're just messing with 40, us calling that, that putting a, a Black Forest thing. I mean, that's just... What, the Black Forest Gatto? Yeah. No, that's, that's all right. They're allowed to do that. <laughs> um, bad luck, Jonathan. I thought, I thought, uh, I, yeah, I thought that was a shoe in Now oh, what? Well, there we go. Uh, now then, Dean, there we are. Maybe that was a lifeline. Yeah. Have you got a good answer? <clears throat> well, I did have. I would imagine... <laughs> and John's just took it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to switch continents and Very I'm wise. go for Colombia. OK, that's... Yes, OK, Colombia. Colombia, there is your red line, Dean. Let's see if Colombia... It's not a massive country, Colombia, is it? I remember seeing a film and they were in a wood. Oh, you're, you're absolutely <laughs> right. <laughs> A lot of it is covered with trees. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's right. Yeah. You watch any film about Colombia, there's usually a canopy overhead. Uh, there we are. There's your red line. If you get below that, you are in the head-to-head. -head. Let's see if Colombia's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Colombia. It's absolutely right. Very well done, Dean. And you are through to the head-to-head. -head. Seven. So much more rewarding than Germany would have been. 69, your total there. 13th most in the world. It's a terrific answer, yeah. 60 million hectares of forests. There we are. Now then, Myra. Hmm. Myra. What do you need to be scoring is 69 or less to get through to the head-to-head? -head? Well, I'm, I'm thinking Russia and, you know, maybe Sweden and Finland and maybe Norway, Christmas trees. Um, Russia. Russia, says Myra. Russia, here comes your red line. Quite nice and high. If you can get below that with Russia, you're in the head-to-head -head and we say goodbye to Jonathan and Mike. Let's see how many people said Russia. Is it right? Absolutely right. Very well done. And you are through. Well done, Myra. 39. 39, taking your total up to 86. Uh, the most forest of any country in the world, Russia, 808 million hectares. Uh, Sweden and Finland also would have uh, seen you through. Sweden would have scored you 27, Finland would have scored you 16. Norway, though, not on the list, so Russia was a good one to go for. Now, there's a few pointless answers. Well done if you said any of these. Gabon, Cameroon and Angola, all of those pointless answers, all those heavily forested, and the Sudan as well would have been a pointless answer. Let's take a look at the, uh, the highest three scores. United States would have scored you 46 points. Canada, there we go, with 47. And right at the top, we've already heard it, Brazil was 62. Thanks very much, Richard. Uh, so, Mike and Jonathan, I'm afraid that means you are our highest scorers at the end of this round. Um, fantastic. It was completely as you didn't predict it, Mike. Lovely low score from you with Peru. And, uh, and then Germany, I'm afraid, letting you down. Bad luck. Really sorry. Uh, we have to say goodbye to you now, but uh, we'll see you again next time. We we'll look forward to that. Thanks so much. Jonathan and Mike, great contestants. Thank you.
for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for our head-to-head. -head. Well, congratulations, Dean and Lisa, Myra and Rory. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance of winning our jackpot, which currently stands at one thousand. Now, we have to decide which pair it is that's going to go through to the final. And to do that, you are now going to go head-to-head. -head. The big difference is you are now allowed to confer. And the first pair to win two questions will be playing for the jackpot. I think this is going to be very, very close indeed. Good luck to both pairs. Let's play the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> OK, here comes your first question. And it concerns... Famous people born in 1963. Famous people born in 1963. Richard. I'm going to show you five pictures now of famous people who turned 50 in 2013. Can you name the most obscure of these, please? OK, let's reveal our five famous people, and here they are. A. B. C. D. And E. There we are, five famous people born in 1963. Now then, Dean and Lisa, you've scored best throughout the show so far, so you get to go first. Okay. Um, we'll go for E, Alex Kingston. Alex Kingston, you are saying for E, Alex Kingston. OK, now, Myra and Rory, talk us through the rest of the board, if you can. You go. Right, well, D's Brad Pitt, C, I think, is Lysa Kudrow, B, I think, is John Burkle, but well, Rory knows I, who A is. I think A is Johnny Marr, the guitarist from The Smiths. So? So I think we'll go for A. You're going to go A, Johnny Marr. So we have Alex Kingston and we have Johnny Marr. Dean and Lisa have said Alex Kingston for E. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said Alex Kingston. It's right. It's good. 20. 20 for Alex Kingston. Myra and Rory have said Johnny Marr for A. Johnny Marr. Let's find out if that's right. And if it is, let's see how far down the column it goes. It is right. I have a feeling this might... Yes, there we are, well done. Four. <laughs> Very well done, Rory. Very well spotted there. That means Myra and Rory, after one question, you are up 1-0. It's the brilliant Johnny Marr. You'd think he would score more than four, wouldn't you? Mm. He deserves two. Did you know that one, Dean and Lisa? Well, the Smiths are one of my favourite bands, <laughs> but... No, I just didn't recognise him. No. OK. I'd know what he sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're absolutely right. B is John Burko, the Speaker of the House of Commons, would have scored you 11 points, so Johnny Marr's a, a better answer. C is Lisa Kudrow, she would have scored 44. And Brad Pitt, looking very good for 50, he would have scored you 76 points. Thanks very much. OK, here comes your second question. Now, Dean and Lisa, you are wrong-footed there. You have to win this one to stay in the game. Good luck. It concerns... Stevie Wonder UK Top 40 Singles. Stevie Wonder singles. Richard. I'm going to show you five Stevie Wonder singles now, but with alternate letters missed out. Can you fill those in and give us the most obscure? Good luck. OK, let's reveal our Stevie Wonder singles, and here they are. We have got H blank P blank Y, blank I blank T blank D blank Y, blank W blank S blank, blank I blank D blank K blank, blank U blank E blank S blank I blank I blank N, E blank O blank Y, blank N blank, I blank O blank Y. There they all are. I'll read them all one last time without the blanks. H P Y I T D Y W S I D K U E S I I N and E O Y N I O Y. There we go. Five Stevie Wonder UK top 40 singles. Myra and Rory, you go first. Yeah, we're just trying to think which will be the lowest. We yeah, think we, we know. Four. We think we know four. Um, I think it's a bigger song, but I think just the getting the answer is harder, so we'll say superstition. Superstition. OK, Myra and Rory say superstition. Dean and Lisa, talk us through the rest of the board. Well, we think the top one's happy birthday. 
not sure at the second one i wish yeah i think yeah. uh the bottom one ebony and ivory but we think we're going to go with sir duke sir duke Sir Duke, say Dean and Lisa. So, Myra and Rory went with superstition. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said it. Oh, it's a good one. Down it goes. Still going down. Nine. Look at that. That's a great answer. Is it as good as this one, I wonder, though? Dean and Lisa went with Sir Duke. Let's see how many people said that. It's going to be close either way. Yep, Sir Duke lifts it. Three for Sir Duke. There we are. Dean and Lisa back in the game again after two questions. It's one all, Richard. Yeah, best answer up there. Sir Duke, very well done. Three points. And he also would have won the point with I Wish, because it was the next best score. It would have scored you five. Uh, the other's a bit higher. Down the bottom there, Ebony and Ivory only scored 20 points. I would have thought with those wow. letters, maybe more people would have got it. And happy birthday, of course, at the top. And that would have scored 56. Thanks very much indeed. OK, so here comes your third question. This is the decider. Whoever wins this goes through to the final and plays for the jackpot. Good luck, both pairs. It concerns... The Hobbit. The Hobbit, Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you five clues now to facts about The Hobbit. Uh, if you give us the more obscure answer, you're going to go through to that jackpot round. So best of luck, both teams. OK, let's reveal our five clues to facts about The Hobbit, and here they come. We have got... Name of the dragon who captured the Lonely Mountain. Name of the New Zealander who directed the 2012 film. The main Hobbit character with the last name Baggins. The number of dwarves who embark on the adventure with the Hobbit. And it was written by this British author. I'll read those all one last time. The name of the dragon who captured the Lonely Mountain. Name of the New Zealander who directed the 2012 film. The main Hobbit character with the last name Baggins. And the number of dwarves who embark on the adventure with the Hobbit. And it was written by this British author. Author, there we are. Now then, Dean and Lisa, once again, you go first. Now we're uh, we're really struggling we're with struggling this. Struggling on this one. Um, neither of us have read it or seen it. <laughs> so, right. Oh, do you want to go have you seen it on a bookshelf? Oh yes, our yes. daughter had it for Christmas. She well, there you go. Actually, reading it at the moment. Well, there's a clue there on the written on the spine of it. Yeah, we know, we know that one. <laughs> And we know one of the other ones. OK. And we can't remember the director's name and we do know it and it's really annoying. So we'll have to go for... The author? Yeah, we'll have to go for the author. Yeah, J.R.R. Tolkien. J.R.R. Tolkien. You're going to kick yourselves in a minute, aren't you? Myra and Ruri. All right. Talk us through the board. Name of the Dragon, Smaug, Peter Jackson, Bilbo, we're not really sure how many dwarfs. I think so it was we're 12 or 13. But so we're going to go for Smaug as the dragon. Smaug. I like that German pronunciation. Smaug or Smaug. Smaug. Smaug or Smaug. Yep, yeah, OK, fair enough. Um, you're probably right, actually. Maybe it is Smaug. Uh, so we are going to go with J.R.R. Tolkien. Dean and Lisa said that. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Fifty-three. Fifty-three. Now, Myra and Ruri, you have gone with Smog or Smaug as the name of the dragon. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. It's right. I have a feeling it's going to... Yep, there we are. Beats Tolkien. Still going down. Smog, six. Very well done. After three questions, Myra and Ruri, you are through to the final 2-1. Richard. Uh, you chose word as well because Peter Jackson uh, did direct the film, would have scored you more points though. Would have scored you 17. Uh, the main Hobbit character obviously is Bilbo Baggins. She scores less than J.R.R. Tolkien, would have scored you 50. And the best answer is the number of dwarfs. If you had to go for 12 or 13, what would I you have gone for? I would have guessed 13. Ah, you'd, have, you'd have been right. And it's the best answer up there as well, would have scored you one point. Very well done to anyone who got all five of those at home. I suspect uh, some of you would have done. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. So, the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, I'm sorry to say it's Dean and Lisa. Oh, you've done so well. You've, <laughs> you've managed to claw back each round. I know. And through you've come, and you've, you've performed incredibly well and very strongly. Sir Duke was a great answer in the head-to-head. -head. Uh, it's been lovely having you on the show, Dean and Lisa. Thanks Thank so much you. for playing. Great contestants. Thank you. Thank you.
But for Myra and Rory, it's now time for our pointless final. Congratulations, Myra and Rory. You've seen off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. So very well done. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £1,000. To win that money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. It's as simple as that. First, though, you have to choose a category, and you have five choices to choose from. Here they are. Athletics, leaders, prolific novelists, funky music, infrastructure. Novelists. <laughs> oh, no, I wouldn't know. You'd be probably on your own, but prolific oh. novelists. You do read a lot. Mm, all right, prolific novelists. Prolific novelists. Mm. OK, we're, you're going to go for that. Let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Tom oh, Clancy novels no. as they could. <laughs> I have Richard. Yeah, we're looking for the title of any fiction novel written by Tom Clancy up to the beginning of March 2013, please. So any Tom Clancy novel, not his non-fiction works, just any of the fiction novels. I suspect lots of people at home will be getting a few of these. Very, very best of luck in the studio as well. OK. You now have up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that £1,000 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yes. OK, let's put 60 seconds on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. Well, we're going to create three... Well, no, I don't know, but he has... There's games that you can get for the consoles, and there's, like, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Strike. Uh, that's the only one I can think of. Well, uh, you're on your own. No, I have no that's idea. all I can think of. And then we we'll have to go for stuff like what's a thrilling title? Um, uh, Tom, Tom Clancy's um, Counter Strike. Sounds like it could be one. Uh, what about Race to Go for it. Race, race to, to Doomsday. <laughs> so, so, we're, we're we're, so, so we'll say that. All right, go on. Rainbow Strike, Race to Doomsday. Yeah. That can be your one. And Counter Strike. Counter Strike. <laughs> yeah. They're <is> good. completely <laughs> wrong. Okay, we that's your time wrong. up. You'll be delighted to hear. Okay, now we were looking for Tom Clancy novels. I now need your three answers. All right, so we're going my completely created one, which is Race to Doomsday. Race to Doomsday. My first one. Then our first Counter one. Strike. Counter Strike. And, see, I'm not thinking. Rainbow Six. Rainbow Six. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Race to Doomsday, Counter Strike and Rainbow Six. In, uh, in what order do you want to put those up? Which is your that, best shot at a pointless go for answer? that order Rain that you said. OK, so Rainbow Six we'll put last. Uh, yeah. Race to Doomsday first, Counter Strike in the middle. OK, let's put those up on the board in that order, and here they are. We have got Race to Doomsday, Counter-Strike and Rainbow Six. OK, we're looking for Tom Clancy novels. Race to Doomsday was obviously your least confident answer because you have just made it up. Uh, you only have to find one point this answer, remember, to win that jackpot of £1,000, but let's see, Race to Doomsday, is there any chance that that's a correct answer? Not today. No. Not today. So, unfortunately, not a pointless answer. You only have two more chances to win today's jackpot. Now, we sort of we move on to slightly firmer ground here. I'm very slightly firmer ground. Um, we're looking for Tom Clancy novels, obviously. Your next answer, Counter-Strike. Obviously, this has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot. Let's say you did win it. I mean, just for fun. £1,000, Myra, what, would, what, 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 what use would you put that to? I'd be so unselfish and give it to my son. He needs, his need is greater than me. He's a poor, <laughs> struggling student. He needs all the money he can get to And I'd spend. probably spend it on a big party. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> OK, for £1,000, let's see how many of our 100 people said Counter-Strike. Is it correct? Again, <clears throat> we can't be too surprised, but uh, an incorrect answer there. So only one more chance to win today's jackpot of £1,000. Everything is now riding on your final answer, which you suddenly changed at the last minute. You just... You had a moment of, of inspiration there. It's cos 
there's games for the consoles which have Tom Clancy's name at the start, I'm sure, and I'm plucking it out from somewhere in my brain, but I don't think it's going to be a novel. OK, well, we're looking for Tom Clancy novels. Your third and final answer was Rainbow Six. You said this was your most confident answer. It has to be right, then it has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot of £1,000. Let's find out. Rainbow Six, is it right? How many people said it, if it is? It's a correct answer, Rory. What about that? Rainbow Six exists with Tom Clancy's name on the cover. Down it goes. If this stops at zero, you leave here with £1,000. It's still... Oh, seven. <laughs> wow. Now, I don't care that you didn't win, but that's exciting. You actually managed to land on, land on a correct answer there, so, so well done. we've never even looked at no, no, no. those books. Okay. Sorry. Well, unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that vital, pointless answer, so I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot of £1,000, and that'll roll over onto the next show. But we have really enjoyed having you here, and it's been fantastic. Thank you so much for playing. And you do, of course, get to take home a pointless trophy each, so very, very well done. Myra and Rory. Yeah, that was a good strategy, Rory. As you say, he's, uh, he's, he's done a few console games. You could have had uh, Ghost Recon. That would have scored you two points. It's a game based on that Splinter Cell as well. That was another six-pointer. Hawks, which is one of his uh, video games. That would have been a pointless answer. So very well done if anyone said that. Now, you're absolutely right also to sort of uh, try and think of the ones that sound a bit like Tom Clancy novels, because virtually every single pointless answer does sound a bit like a Tom Clancy novel. <laughs> so let's take a look at a few and see what you should have made up. Uh, Act of Valor. Acts of War breaking point. Now that's a good breaking point. Cold War, End Game, Net Force, <laughs> The Bear and the Dragon, <laughs> The Deadliest Game, The Hunted. There's a few more as well. Bio Strike. Bio Strike. Bio Strike. Oh, Bio Strike. Boyo. <laughs> I think. Where's that? Bio Strike. That's that's the tale of the 1960s miners' strike in the yeah. Welsh Valleys. <laughs> uh, Cloak and Dagger, Cutting Edge. You could have had Death Match, Divide and Conquer. Wildcard Zero Hour, and my favourite, Ruthless.com. <laughs> wow. All pointless. What about that? You could have made any yes, of those absolutely. up. Absolutely. <laughs> oh. Well, unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to you, Myra and Rory, but it's been wonderful having you on the show. Thank you both so much for playing. You've done so well. Myra and Rory. Well, sadly, they didn't win our jackpot today, which means it rolls over onto the next show when we will be playing for £2,000. Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>